Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I've asked for submissions of top five tips, if you have them, top five ways to do something, top five anything really, and you can email me your top five to chris at perillo.com, that's my email address, and Helder Rodriguez uh, took me up on that offer and sent in five tips for reducing computer case noise, and I'm just going to read his email verbatim, it's fantastic. Hey Chris, I've read that you're always looking for top five tips for various things, so here are mine. Like many people, I have a computer located in my bedroom, and like many people, I also have it on 24-7. Now as you probably know, the components of the PC get older, they tend to get progressively noisier. This becomes a problem when you're trying to sleep. Now if you don't have a screwless ATX case and a relatively old PC like I do, he says it's four years old, and you have a noisy computer who doesn't let you fall asleep, here are some tips I've gathered along the years to help you diagnose and reduce computer case noise. One, make sure all the screws that hold the drives, motherboard, and cards are tight, but not too tight as you might damage the screws. Also, when you install a drive, hard drive, DVD, etc., use all screw holes. It may seem that two screws are enough to hold it in place, but most of that metal rattling noise comes either from loosely mounted drives, cards, or the case side lids. If the lids in your case are the sliding lock type, make sure they're aligned perfectly and put the screws on the back. I know it's easier to leave them out if you're constantly opening your case, but as you do this, the lids get looser and eventually there's a metal rattle again, so keep it tight. Number two, get a quality power supply. This usually is one of the components where manufacturers cut costs, so stock PSUs tend to be cheap and noisy. It's also one of the most critical components in your system. So not only are you reducing the noise your computer generates, you're also reducing the risk of frying it because of a low quality PSU. Believe me, it's not that uncommon. There are some great brands out there, so just pick a good PSU that suits you and your wallet. They're a bit more expensive than a generic PSU, but on the long run, it's worth it. Number three, replace the stock fans on your case. Again, stock case fans on a regular PC are as cheap and noisy as they make them. A good low dB or decibel fan is inexpensive, about $10, and less prone to getting noisier as they age. Also, a neat trick is to put some rubber rings between the fan and the case as that absorbs some of the vibration that's transmitted. But remember that a fan always produces noise and transmit vibrations, so the more you have... Number four. Check the connectors from your peripherals. This was more common when COM and serial ports were popular because the most of the connectors were plastic cases with screws instead of molded plastic. But some ports in modern computers use v, uh, as VGA and DVI are still COM-like ports can buzz when they are loose. So make sure they are firmly inserted with the screws tight. It's not that common with USB or Firewire because of the nature of the pin connectors, but some USB ports have a thin metal foil between the connector and the port, and when it's loose, it can sometimes produce some buzz. Five, don't install a giant CPU cooler just because it looks cool. If you aren't into doing serious overclocking with your computer, you really don't need it. And if you want to do overclocking and are inexperienced in handling hardware, ask for help from someone who is. When wrongly installed, these monster heat sinks can produce some serious buzz and rattle. Side note, I've seen people who don't overclock and install these coolers because the CPU gets too hot with the stock one, but if this is the case, then your stock cooler isn't probably the problem. There are other things you can do to drop the temperature, like cleaning the dust out that accumulates on the fan and heat sink, or improve the airflow of your case, but that's a whole different subject. To wrap it up, and this isn't actually a tip, but if you're going to spend extra money on a quality screwless case, they usually come with quality fans, it's a good investment, and you can skip steps one through three. That's it. I know that cases where you have to screw everything are becoming a thing of the past, but many people still have them, so I thought you'd find this helpful. Helder from Portugal. Uh, let me throw it out to uh, both SC Thor and uh, Kat, if you're still listening, if you have anything to add. Good to know. Uh, I've got a couple things. Oh, go ahead. Um, use bigger fans instead of oh, smaller fans. They can, uh, you can get, they'll 
spin slower and push the same amount of air and therefore make less noise. Good tip. Good tip. I usually just hide um, hide my computer. When you're buying a fan, there's there's two major specs to look at. There's the dB, the decibels, how much noise it makes, and the CFM, which is how much air it pushes. And you want to kind of get the trade off of both is what noise level can you deal with and how much air do you have to push and yeah I mean I didn't realize it but uh, the computer that I've currently got right now uh, sounds like an airplane taking off uh, it's in a quiet mode right now but even in quiet mode it's still it's still quite noticeable in the room I wish I, I I wish I had the time to make it quieter, but then again, I'm probably getting a new computer system at some point in the near future. Anyway, so uh, people in the chat room looks like uh, they've been Another tip, posting tips. Another uh, tip: you can get uh, fans with temperature sensors. Oh yeah. They will speed up and slow down depending on the amount of heat. Um, you can use fewer fans. They have a technology called heat pipes, which can transport heat from one place to another. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, like in my shuttle XPC, the it didn't actually have a heat sink on the on the CPU. It had a brick that ran heat pipes to the the back of the computer, where there was a heat sink and the uh, 90 millimeter fan, and the exhaust fan and the heat sink fan were basically combined into one to make hmm. less noise. Hmm. And I think a lot of this really applies to the people who are building their own systems. Um, it, you could, I suppose, replace yes. components in a pre-built system. However, the complexity is in question because uh, typically those systems are assembled not to be upgraded sometimes, or if they are assembled to be upgraded, it may not be very easy. Uh, I've discovered that when trying to remove hard drives from pre-assembled computers, and uh, what a nightmare. Yes, you have to terrify the whole damn computer. Oh, it's horrible. So, uh, yeah, that's, those are really good tips. I really appreciate that, Helder, and, and thanks for throwing in uh, your suggestions too, uh, SC Thor. Um, you know, we're always looking for tips, whether they're hardware, software, internet, website, whatever. If you have a top five of your own, I'd love to read your email. Again, so long as you can string two words together with some amount of uh, consistency. You were saying? Oh, another thing. Um, uh, CPU fans, they're like the one that goes on the heat sink. There, it's a second, the regular kind you get is just a regular fan that spins and has a motor in the middle. So it's pushing air down, but it's the, it leaves a void right where the core of the CPU is in the center. Hmm. Uh, Cooler Master and some other brands make a uh, turbine type fan, which actually spins like 90 degrees opposite. So it pushes the air down across the entire CPU at once, instead of leaving the, the center in a void. Hmm. See, we're just full of them. This, the, gosh, this is a jam-packed of information. <laughs> I, you know what? I never thought I would need Another to know more. Another thing to look for is um, your, in your power supply, there basically there's two different places where they can put the fan. They can either put the fan at the back like where you plug the power cable in, but because of the shape of a power supply, it's pretty much limited to about 80 millimeters. But if they put the fan in the bottom, they can put a 120 millimeter fan and cool it, and it actually helps exhaust air out of your CPU, or your case better, and a bigger fan, less RPM, less noise. Do you have a doctorate in, in computer case cooling? Just curious. He's no. just a genius. Period. I, I, yeah, fan go that way. That's about as much as I know. You know, that's that's really as far as I go. So uh, thanks again for those. I had to learn that uh, on on the case fans. There's actually a little arrow that tells you which way to point it, so you don't put it in backwards. <laughs> oh, that would not be good. That would certainly not be good. Well, I know there's a lot of people out there who who ask, you know, specifically about this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, really hardcore optimization, nitty gritty, uh, and I hope we've armed you with enough intelligence so that you can make a, an informed decision uh, when you go to build your next computer, or if you haven't yet, well, hopefully this uh, set of tips will come in handy. Certainly much more than five tips. I think we were over ten. That's awesome. Uh, so again, thanks, and if you've got top five tips, email them to me, chris at perillo.com. 
Dot-com. Of course, you can leave your own tips related to this subject inside this thread uh, of this post. And then, of course, you're also welcome to swing by our website, where we're typically talking about this stuff, hardware, a lot of gamers, a lot of overclockers tend to stop by the chat room on a daily basis. And we're there seven days a week, 24 hours a day, at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.